Alrighty, everyone, welcome back. It is now the beginning of January of 2023. And ever since, of course, the end of Mando Season 2, a lot of fans have really been embracing the third season and what's in stock by John, George, and Dave, and exactly what they are also planning for the Ahsoka Tano series, and even a planned second season of the Ahsoka series that's being actually pitched to the Disney board members right now from John and Dave as we speak. This is Mike Zero. Subscribe if you're new and like this video to see future Star Wars updates. I'm also on Twitter at MikeZero1. I thank you all so very much for the kind and great support. Now, one thing about John, George, and Dave is that what they are currently doing with the upcoming Star Wars shows is that they are basically going to be introducing a lot of Legends content as well as really digging up the unapproved Legends material back from the 1990s into the early 2000s and exactly how that's going to be also used as brand new material that we never got to see before ever and how that's going to be implemented into the Ahsoka series as well. Now as we talked about this earlier, John and Dave are really on a big pitch to Disney right now on transforming Ahsoka from being a limited show into a multi-season show and they've already been creating storyboards as we speak for a season two of Ahsoka ahead of time because they're very positive and very optimistic that Disney's going to green light a second season by this April. Now in case you guys did not know by this April is when we're going to be getting the Ahsoka teaser trailer right around Star Wars Celebration. And so it seems that they're going to be greenlighting this based on the fan reception of the official teaser trailer and or trailer. Now with that being said, with of course Star Wars Ahsoka now getting closer to its summer release window by Favreau and Filoni, they are already pitching season 2 for the show to Disney higher-ups. Both Favreau and Filoni have already been creating storyboards for a second season that will be finalized for an upcoming script to be once, of course, Disney gives them the approval of greenlighting the show again. However, one of the big storyboards that Favreau and Filoni illustrated involves something truly special for Star Wars fans. In one of the storyboards, Ahsoka is said to be in the world between worlds, again, where the Force ghosts of Anakin, Obi-Wan, and Yoda are surrounding her in a circular formation. This is where they are teaching Ahsoka a lesson about the wills and the deities of the galaxy. I want to pause here for one second. Now, it's heavily hinted, even in The Rise of Skywalker, that when Rey is looking up in the sky and it transforms into literal space, that that was indeed some kind of entrance into the world between worlds. Because if you look at the world between worlds, it looks exactly the same. It looks like space with stars in the background and this walkway leading to other portals, except in Rey's scenario it was just blank space. But in that blank space, she heard the Force Ghosts. And basically what they're doing now with Ahsoka is that they're trying to create a tie-in where the Force Ghosts from the Astral Plane, which by the way is going to be the official canon word for the Netherworld, and how the Astral Plane has a big connection to the WBW, all right? and how that's going to be established. Now, in this scenario, they are going to grab Hayden back to play Force Ghost Anakin, and they're also getting Ewan McGregor to actually partially play himself as Obi-Wan with an additional CGI makeup to make him look like Sir Alec Guinness and his version of the Force Ghost of Kenobi as much as possible. So that's another great piece of news there, is the fact that they are implementing all three great Force Ghosts that we got to see together in Return of the Jedi, and bringing them back for the second season of Ahsoka. Now, moving on to the next big thing here is where things really begin to progress and get even more wild when it comes to exactly what they are about to establish in the Star Wars franchise in the second season of Ahsoka. Now, like I say, Favreau and Filoni are extremely optimistic that season two is going to happen. It all depends on the fan reception of the marketing of the Ahsoka series itself. Now, with that being said, moving on to the next big thing here is that when it all leads down to the WBW, it actually gets even more enhanced. So, in this actual sequence, Obi-Wan's Force Ghost is said to be teaching Ahsoka a new Force ability that will be introduced in the Star Wars canon. 
This ability is said to have something to do with the force projection technique, an ability that can only be learned from the astral plane, which is the new way of calling it the netherworld. This is said to be the same way that Luke learned this ability later in his life from the force ghosts of the past. Now I can understand why some fans are not gonna like that because it's a little bit of a reminder of The Last Jedi, but let's not forget that even in Legends, Luke actually pulled off the force projection technique. The only difference in Legends was that it was really a dark side ability. He did this when he actually fell to the dark side under Palpatine in Dark Empire 1, and of course leading into 2. Moving on. So additionally, on top of all of this, this illustration, of course, and the progress of it all is to a point where Ahsoka looks through one of the portals and witnesses a glimpse of Luke's failure at some point. Here is where Ahsoka is said to attempt to course correct some of Luke's actions using the WBW and that this will be John and Dave's way of fixing Luke's timeline and what he chooses to do. Now I can see how fans may like this and may not like this. Some fans may love this because yes, it course corrects the timeline. On the other end, the flip side to the coin, some fans may really resent this because you have somebody like Ahsoka pretty much in charge of Luke's fate to an, to an extent, or kind of course correcting Luke's lifestyle for himself. So I could see how fans are gonna have different opinions on that and that's fine. But I think, you know, when you look at the scenario, what else could John and Dave really do, right? Without really just erasing tons of lore and just kind of just putting it to the wayside. This is probably the best thing that they could really do. And as we saw, the WBW changed the timeline already. If it weren't for Ezra Bridger, <laughs> Ahsoka may very well have died at the hands of Vader in that Sith temple. So that is just one big reminder there of what this realm is able to do and how it has a series of rules. All right, we already know that Anakin is gonna be a big focus in the WBW in season one, where Ahsoka tries to save him from becoming Darth Vader, only to learn that she cannot change what's about to happen because he's the chosen one. And so the wills, these deities, if you will, don't allow such a thing to be course corrected. So the deities, basically, they bring everything in balance. They allow certain things to happen and allow certain things to not happen and leave things up to the WBW to kind of fluctuate that process if need be. So obviously there's a lot of variables when it comes to this realm. We still don't know all that much about the lore and that's what John and Dave are here for. They are here, by the way, to really kind of canonize a lot of facts about the world between worlds and exactly how it's gonna be used in the upcoming Star Wars projects. So with that being all done and said, all right, we already know that John and Dave are on their A-game now. They're really trying to do their best as possible. And I'm really intrigued to see what each and every one of you guys have to say about this below in the comments. And if you guys did enjoy the content for today, make sure to drop a thumbs up on this video to support the channel. I thank you all so very much for the kind support and I'll catch you guys next time.